Hi, GDR here in beautiful Jamaica on a lovely cool evening with another reading in response to your requests that I read from my work. Thank you very much for requesting that. I'm really honored to do it. All right. This is from The Spiritual Path. I've taken a little reading from The Spiritual Path. This section um, is called Devotion. I chose this because it can sort of show you where I'm coming from and how I think when in putting this book together. All right. Because... You look at the spiritual path and you think, what's that about? Okay, this little chapter is called Devotion. Here we go. The big question about spiritual devotion, which encompasses where, how, and when, is why. Why offer devotion to a divine perfection that by definition is beyond wanting or needing our devotion or anything? Texts and teachers differ widely on this subject. Those that believe in a personal God hold a certain transactional relationship to be in place. You ask God for help and God responds. I've seen too many miracles to discount this long-established tradition of asking the divine perfection to intervene. But it's always seemed to me that such appeals for divine intervention, if one makes them at all, should be reserved for emergencies and not really a part of regular daily devotional practice. If there is a divine perfection, then we're duty-bound to do that all we can within our own powers to be healthy, housed, fed, and in a position to serve in devotion with full vitality. That's on us. We don't ask the divine perfection to cut our fingernails. And it seems to me that in asking for something from the divine perfection, we're on a different frequency of connection, so to speak. In a universe predicated on the perfect giving, of the divine perfection, the logical frequency of connection is giving, not taking. When we give our life energy, our innocent essence, in devotional practice, and we don't ask for anything in return, we're in a state of selflessness called grace. My spiritual teacher told me that one of the purposes of devotion is to make the self so clean inside that a tiny element of divine energy can flow into it. However, bearing in mind that my teacher has been in active devotion for 40 years, and I've only done it for five years, I didn't experience any flow of divine energy, not that I could report. What I did experience was an undeniable connection to the spiritual reality, constantly validated by affirmations and manifestations. Knowing that now, for me, the purpose of active devotion is to establish and maintain an ever more profound connection to the spiritual reality. It is its own reason for being. That in turn prompts another question, why be connected to the spiritual reality assuming that such a thing exists and that it's possible to forge and enhance the connection? Why do it? The first answer is because we can, and that's not as flippant as it sounds. If there is such a thing as a divine perfection, and if it's possible to connect indirectly through the spiritual reality, the logic would be to do so. The second answer is that we are an exploring species, an inquisitive thinking species, and the spiritual is unexplored terrain for many of us. And as with any exploration of the unknown, there is knowledge to be gained and there are lessons to be learned. The third answer is to evolve and expand the inner horizon of the spiritual self. Active spiritual devotion is its own instruction Doing it teaches you how to do it in ever more refined ways. Doing it gives you all the instruction you need to go on and to go deeper. And all the while, the spiritual self is growing and evolving to fill the spiritual space within. As a fourth reason to do active devotion, I offer that it's the most energizing, exciting, exhilarating, fulfilling and extraordinary personal experience of my life. And I'm guessing that it's the same for all those who experience the elation of connection with this spiritual reality that permeates this beautiful world. There is literally nothing like it in this world. So a little reading from the spiritual path. I'll continue these. I've got two more readings from Shantaram that I'd like to post for you next time. Blessings and love from Jamaica. Read on and enjoy.